Okay, organic reactions. So here I've compiled a table of all of the organic reactions that you are responsible for. And I will just point out that the first three types here, combustion, substitution, and addition, we've already covered. Okay, so I included them here just to help you consolidate the information because I know time is a precious commodity these days. So, quick review, all hydrocarbons burn. So you'll notice here that I put um, a, an organic molecule that would be hydrocarbon based. It may or may not contain oxygen, even nitrogen or chlorine, but the point is they all burn. So they can all react with O2 to produce CO2 and water. We'll just assume complete combustion. Of course, you would balance these uh, combustion reactions. Substitution, we've already seen that alkanes and aromatics substitute, so you can follow these familiar patterns. Remember, R is an alkyl group, meaning a hydrocarbon group, and X is any halogen. Usually we see bromine and chlorine involved here. Addition reactions cover halogenation, hydrogenation, hydrohalogenation, and hydration. Must, there must be a multiple bond present. Okay, so ultimately then, today's lesson is really about these next five, and that's what's new today. Okay, so specifically oxidation, reduction, elimination, condensation, and hydrolysis. So oxidation involves reacting an alcohol or an aldehyde with an inorganic substance that is a source of oxygen. So this O is not oxygen gas. It's an, it's an abbreviated symbol here for an inorganic reagent such as potassium permanganate or potassium dichromate or potassium chlorate. There are other substances that uh, can be the source of oxygen. So you don't need to memorize these formulas here. Just literally having the O in round brackets is sufficient. So I'm using the general formulas here, but I am also writing it out in words to help you because I know you're, you know, still looking to consolidate your knowledge of the families. So, primary alcohols will oxidize to aldehydes, releasing water. Secondary alcohols oxidize to ketones, uh, again with water produced. Tertiary alcohols actually do not react. They do not oxidize. So just to help you out with the concept of primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols. Okay, so to recognize primary alcohols, we notice the carbon that the OH is bonded to is itself bonded to one other carbon, and that's what makes it primary. Check with secondary. The carbon that the OH is bonded to is itself bonded to two other carbons, and that makes it secondary. Tertiary, the carbon that the OH is bonded to is itself bonded to three carbons, and that's what makes it tertiary. So really, the general pattern here is that alcohols oxidize to produce that carbonyl group. And whether it's gonna be on the end carbon or an inside carbon depends on whether you started with a primary alcohol or a secondary. Really, the key is to re remember to change that functional group right at the carbon where the functional group was to start. So the red carbon is where the functional group is, the, o the hydroxyl group is. So that's the carbon that I'm going to change when it's oxidized. So the first CH3 isn't changed at all. We're going to lose an H from the carbon where the hydroxyl is together with the H of the hydroxyl. And this oxidizing agent is doing a good job grabbing that. And so we end up with the original hydroxyl carbon now having just an H and a double bond oxygen with water being formed. Okay, same thing works for the secondary here. We oxidize the secondary alcohol to form. Might need a little bit more space here. So again, focus in on the red carbon there. Everything else stays the same. So CH3 
there's the red carbon, CH2, CH3, and the H attached to the red carbon and the H from the hydroxyl together with the oxygen from the inorganic reagent form the water and that leaves us with double bond oxygen to, uh, from that carbon. So now we have a ketone. So secondary alcohols oxidize to ketones, primary alcohols oxidize to aldehydes. Notice that we needed a hydrogen off of the red carbon, right, in order for this reaction to happen. Look at the tertiary alcohol. There's no hydrogen directly bonded to this carbon. Therefore, that's why these tertiary alcohols do not oxidize. And so NR is enough there for no reaction. Okay, so that just helps you out with the oxidation here. And that really covers these first ones here. Now, what else can happen with oxidation? Well, once you've formed this aldehyde here, so the ethanol, aldehydes oxidize to carboxylic acids. So you can oxidize this, and again, just focus in on this functional group here, and that's the only thing that changes. No matter how complicated the rest of the molecule looks, just change the functional group and it oxidizes to a carboxylic acid, so here we go, introducing that full carboxyl group. And that's an example of the last reaction here in the oxidation reaction. Uh, okay, so reduction, we're specifically looking at hydrogenation of aldehydes and ketones. So you'll notice that the, these two Reactions here are exactly the opposite, right? We're taking an aldehyde and forming that primary alcohol. We're taking a ketone and forming that secondary alcohol. And so really, it's like the reverse of these oxidation reactions. And we do it, right, by hydrogenating. So the, the inorganic reagent is H2. Um, elimination reactions involve eliminating or removing a small molecule from a larger molecule to form two products. And so we can choose, and our, our elimination reaction that we're going to study here is alcohols dehydrating, so having water removed to form an alkene. Okay, so here we have butan-2-all, and we're going to eliminate water. We're going to dehydrate this alcohol. So we'll lose the OH, the hydroxyl group, and an H on a neighboring carbon. Don't worry about which one when you're reforming this, but um, if I just show you what would be left over, you'll realize that these two carbons are missing the octet, and that's in fact where the double bond is reformed, and water is released. So we've eliminated water from this alcohol molecule. So we formed butene. Could we have formed butene? Yes, we could have keyed in on one of these hydrogens and the hydroxyl, and that would have left the double bond going um, between carbons two and three. Okay, so that's an example of an elimination reaction. So we've gone through the reduction here being the reverse of those oxidations. You can literally just follow the pattern, the elimination, and now we're on to the condensation. So there's two condensation reactions in the table, the esterification and the amidification. So we're basically preparing an ester or preparing an amide. And we do that by reacting a carboxylic acid with, in the ester case, we'll re react the carb acid with an alcohol. And you'll see what happens here is a condensation. So these two molecules come together and they condense. So they come together to form a larger molecule and removing water as that happens. So notice now that this carbon here is going to now be bonded to the oxygen from the alcohol. And so we still have the two carbons in the original carboxylic acid but now bonded to, single bonded to the oxygen of the alcohol and water is released. So the two come together and condense, right, releasing water. So same thing happens 
in the uh, formation of an amide linkage, uh, and it's the OH from the hydroxyl group and an H from the amine. I've drawn a secondary amine with two R groups off the nitrogen. It can react with a primary amine also, as long as there's a hydrogen on the nitrogen, which means that a tertiary amine, one where the nitrogen does not have an H bonded to it, would not react. So as long as you have an H there, water can be released. So again, we're still going to have the original carbons of the carboxylic acid, but now the hydroxyl group's gone and the carbon single bonds to the nitrogen of the original amine. And here we go. Now we've formed an amide. So there's our ester linkage, esterification. Here's our amide linkage. Very similar patterns, just one we use an alcohol with the carboxylic acid and one we use an amine from the table here, right, which reaction pattern involves reacting a compound with oxygen gas? And there's definitely only one. If you think back to your different reaction patterns, right, we hydrogenate alkenes to produce alkanes. And okay, so now you're going to go through table two, and I'll start you off here, um, and you'll finish the rest for homework. But we're going to complete this table based on the patterns in table one. So I've given you pieces of information and you need to figure out the missing, uh, missing information. So in part A here, we see the reactants are hexane and oxygen gas. So if you think back to those reaction patterns, those, right, oxygen gas only shows up once here, that is the combustion reaction. You'll recall that the products of combustion are carbon dioxide and water. I'm not going to write those out here, but certainly for the rest of these where there's organic um, structures, you know, you can write the name of the organic compound and that'll help you practice your, uh, your nomenclature, naming of the compounds. Okay, part B. Part B, the reactants are propene and hydrogen. All right, so propene is an alkene. So we're adding hydrogen to an alkene. We can go back here and complete the table. Propene plus hydrogen is going to be an addition reaction, right? Specifically, hydrogenation. And then you need to think about when you could draw this out to help yourself, but if you have propene and you add H2 there, so the double bond breaks to a single, and then you have two H's going there, it's actually going to form propane. So feel free to, you know, below the table to be drawing those out so that you can figure that out. Okay, I'll go through part C with you and then leave you to do the rest of the table. So part C, I made it a little bit different. I gave you the products. So basically what I'm asking you is, how do you form chlorobenzene? So there's a big clue there that the chloro is there, so we have a halogen attached to a benzene. So you think back to those reaction patterns, benzene compounds were in the substitution reaction pattern, right? And how do we get a halogen on a benzene ring? Well, if you think back, there was definitely halogenation there. So substitution and specifically halogenation. So it took benzene plus Cl2 to specifically form chlorobenzene. Now I need to recognize that there's a second product in that substitution reaction and so I'll fill in the plus HCl. So always um, you know keep an eye out for those secondary products. Um, yeah. So in this table, when I gave you reactants, if there's only one reactant enlisted, like there is in part D here, then that's all there is for reactants. Okay, so if there's two, then you can see the two to go with. So I've tried to cover all the reaction patterns in this table, so you'll find it pretty thorough as you go through. So I'm asking you to do your best to complete this table, and we'll discuss it together. Okay, and the last question here is a multi-step synthesis. So very often the target organic molecule that's being prepared in a lab 
doesn't come as a result of one reaction. Often there's a sequence of reactions that need to be performed. It's kind of like going from A to Z. You know, we go from A to B, from B to C, from C to D, and so on until we eventually get to Y and then from Y to Z. And so the idea here is that we're being asked to prepare pentan 2 il butanoate all right and we're at being asked to prepare that from pentene and butanal so i've started you off and i'm basically asking you to fill in the blanks you can either name or draw the missing structures okay so fill in the blanks um, by doing one of those all right so pent one ene plus water so you'll need to look into your reaction patterns and think about what happens there right and indicate the product or products on the right side name or draw that's the first step of this multi-step synthesis the second step involves butanal right and then this oxygen in the round bracket so you need to remember what that means and figure out what the products are when that reaction occurs and then the third step here involves as you can tell by the plus sign two reactants that then form the target molecule pentan 2 il butanoate and water and so it's your job to again fill in the blanks by either drawing the missing structures or naming them so i'm not asking you to design the multi-step synthesis uh, we certainly need a lot more practice time i think for you know to expect you to um, be doing that, but certainly you can use your knowledge of the reactions with the information I've given you in the synthesis to fill in the gaps. All right, so please complete the table all the way to Q and complete the multi-step synthesis.